Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 9. This is the continuation of the Jeremiah commentary. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 1. Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because he was the prophet of doom and gloom, of the Lord's judgment upon a wicked people. Sounds like we, uh, we need a Jeremiah today. Verse 2. Verse 2. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place for wayfaring men. See, Jeremiah's uh, longing for the, for the forest, the woods, to get away from the wicked people in the city. And when you read Revelation 12, that seems to be the future of the church. Even though the pre-trib rapture crowd don't believe that, but uh, hey, I've never been popular among the pre-trib rapture crowd. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place for wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. Are they adulterers with their neighbor's wives, or are they spiritual adulterers? You know, the Lord was their husband. I mean, you don't have to be a member of the Church of Satan to be an idolater or an adulterer. Uh, you know, some people, their, their God is money. I can show you some very, very rich people who in this country and other countries that are, they're God's money. You know, some people like power, telling other people what to do, having the power of life and death over other people because they got followers that are willing to do things that they shouldn't. There was a guy in World War II I forget his name. I should look it up. Hold on. All right. His name was Eddie Slovic. He didn't want to kill people. So what did they do? They shot him. Firing squad. Executed him. I mean, you know, if, if soldiers would have just said, hey, I'm not going to shoot a guy, an unarmed guy that just doesn't want to kill people, you know, but that's the problem. People are always willing to follow other people to do evil things. So, uh, he says that I might leave my people and go from them. He wants to separate himself from the evil ones. For they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. Probably physical and spiritual adulterers. An assembly of treacherous men, evil people. Verse 3. And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. Uh, what do you mean by a bow? You know, like an archery. A bow and arrow. They bend their tongue for bows, like, a, like their bow for lies. He's comparing 
their tongues to a bow and arrow, and I guess the lies are their arrows. And they bend their tongue like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. Oh yeah, when it comes to doing evil, they're heroes. But when it comes to doing good, forget about it. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Yeah, they know the devil really well. They're on a first name basis with uh, Lucifer, I suppose. But to know the Lord God of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's a stranger. They don't know him. Verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. In other words, your brother will steal from you, and your neighbor will lie about you. Well, that's what slandering is. Verse 5. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Wow. They've done so much uh, evil that they're, they're tired. They're weary. Their habitation is in the midst of deceit. In other words, they live in lies. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Behold, I will melt them? What? All right, what's this melting stuff? Well, I guess we got to go to 2 Peter chapter 3. You know, there's people that uh, hate Paul. And they'll tell you that 2 Peter is a fake book and it doesn't belong in the Bible because it affirms Paul as a brother in the faith. They hate Paul so much that they want to get rid of 2 Peter. But uh, like I say, hey, you know, tell them to go to hell. Because, you know, if you don't like Paul, you don't like the guy that sent Paul. And if you don't like the guy that sent Paul, you don't like God the Father that sent the guy that sent Paul. Yeah. His name, that guy, his name is Jesus. And they don't like that either. Oh, his name wasn't Jesus. Oh, really? Tell that to Gabriel, who told Mary to name him that. And Joseph. Yeah. 2 Peter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. See, for the unbelievers... The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. They won't see it. Believers were told in Matthew 24 the signs to look for for the coming of the Lord. And when people tell you the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, it's two different events, they're idiots. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. And those that say that the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, it's two different things, as far as I'm concerned, they're denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. But, hey, that's my opinion. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. See, the believers won't... To them, he's, Jesus is going to be a thief. But to believers, we're going to see the signs of the times. Book of Joel says the sun will uh, darken and the moon will not give her light. And the moon shall turn as blood. It'll turn blood red before the great and terrible day of the Lord. 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Yeah, read Matthew 24 if you want to see the time. Uh, the um, signs of the times for the Lord's appearance when he returns in glory. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Yeah, all the evil works will be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, you know, burned up, melted. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening, hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. See? Talks about burned up, dissolved, melt, melt, fervent heat. Oh, yeah. So, what about it? Hey, let's take a look at Malachi chapter 4. One of the Old Testament minor prophets. Uh, minor in size, not minor in importance for prophecy. There's a whole bunch of prophecy in the uh, minor prophets. People just, you know, they don't, they don't consider reading the Bible worth their time. Seriously. They... <laughs> You know, which is why the Lord deceives these people or allows them to be deceived. And I'm not saying necessarily the Lord allows them. Well, the Lord himself deceives these people, but he will allow it. I mean, after all, if you go to a church, so-called, that's got a wolf for a pastor and he preaches lies to you and you don't bother ever to pick up a Bible and read it on your own, uh, you know, Whose fault is that if you're deceived? But God, why didn't you give me uh, discernment? Why didn't you tell me that this was a lie? You know, people died to give you the Bible in your own language. John Wycliffe. Do you know that the, um, the papists, you know, the Pope followers, they gathered sticks and they put a, uh, a, a stake dug it in the ground, and they tied him to that stake. And they took the, the paper from his own Bible and used it to light a fire and burn the sticks, and they burned him alive for the crime of daring to have the Bible in the language of the people, English. Well, older English. That was his crime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Pope followers. They burned him for the sin of giving people the Bible in their own language. Yeah. Where does, it, where does the Bible say to kill people for daring to have the Bible in their own language? No, they'd rather spout gibberish in Latin that nobody understands. You know, so, and Latin is, it's a dead language. Pretty much Hebrew, too. I don't care what any of these Hebrew roots people say. I can hand them a, a, a Bible in Hebrew and say, hey, can you read this and then translate it into English? And then you follow along in an English Bible, and they can't. Because all those over in the Middle East, they speak Yiddish. And Yiddish just looks like Hebrew. I mean, German and English look alike, but the words are different, you know? 
And, uh, you know, German, you don't necessarily can read English. And if you read English, you don't necessarily know German. But Yiddish is not uh, Hebrew. And I was reading that 90% of the people over in uh, the Middle East there know Yiddish. Wow. And of the other ones, they're probably English and all the other languages that they speak over there. You know, that's the thing. People died to give us the Bible in our own language. And people are too lazy, churchgoers are too lazy to read it. They deserve to be deceived. They deserve it. All right, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Remember, we're talking about uh, the elements and burning up and all that stuff. Malachi 4, chapter 4, and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. What's stubble? It's garbage. It's just, it's burnable garbage. And, you know, uh, like when you take an ear of corn and you peel the husk off. So that you could eat the uh, kernels the co on the cob. What do you do with the husks? Well, if they're dried, you could just throw them in a pile and burn them. That would be stubble. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves, calves of the stall. Listen to this. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Woo, baby! And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's face it, people. The Bible says that Sodom was an, an, an example to the wicked. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Two points here. One, Elijah was one of only two people that never died in the Bible. The other one was Enoch. And now some people will say that uh, John the Baptist was Elijah. Well, the Bible says that John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. But John the Baptist, when he was asked if he was Elijah, he said no. And John knew full well who he was. Okay? You know, the, the, John the Baptist was not Elijah. Unless, of course, you want to believe in reincarnation. No. But another point is, now, I did an entire Bible study on Elijah, one hour and 40 minutes long. You want to study more on this? Go for it. But the thing is, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day, dreadful day of the Lord. 
When Christ came here healing people, was that a dreadful day? No, of course not. It was a good day. The dreadful day is going to be dreadful for the wicked. And that hasn't happened yet. Okay, there's two, two comings of the Lord. Okay, it's different. But Elijah the prophet is going to be coming before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. In other words, he's going to be one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation. Verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. All right, that's the end of Malachi chapter 4. Verse 7 of Jeremiah chapter 9. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them. Oh yeah, does that make sense now? Behold, I will melt them and try them, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. Their tongue. The Lord likens their tongues to an arrow. What happens when an arrow hits you? There's a good chance you're going to die, right? Their tongues are full of death, people. Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbors with his mouth, but in heart he layeth his weight. In other words, secretly they're waiting to do hurt to the people. Verse 9. Shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? For the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing, and for the habitations of the wilderness a lament, a, lament, uh, a lamentation, because they are burned up so that none can pass through them. Neither can men hear the voice of the cattle. Both the fowl of the heavens and the beast are fled. They are gone. Verse 11. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. A den of dragons. And I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. A den of dragons? What? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. A den of dragons. Revelation 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called... The devil and Satan. See, the King James Bible explains and interprets the King James Bible, if you let it. But if you want to use a modern version, uh, well, don't be surprised that that easier to read Bible version doesn't explain things. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So if Satan's the great dragon, what do you think his angels are? Other dragons, right? Huh. Jeremiah 9, 11, And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. Oh, yeah. You know, what's a den? You know, it's a place where animals live. You know, it could be a hole in the side of a, a hill. Jerusalem's going to be a, a den of dragons. The devil's going to live there. Well, he probably already does, especially today, right? And I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Verse 12. Who is the wise man? that they may understand this. And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord hath spoken, that he may declare it? 
for what the land for what the land perisheth and is burned up like a wilderness that none passeth through and the lord saith because they have forsaken my law which i set before them and have not obeyed my voice neither walked therein but they have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Balaam which their fathers taught them ooh remember people always saying oh yeah just follow your heart follow your heart there was a music group uh, let's see where were they back in the uh, I think it was in the 80s gosh I'm getting old uh, called Triumph and uh, they had a song called follow your heart but in Jeremiah 17 9 we read the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it well and the answer to that is the Lord so the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked uh, follow your heart and eh, maybe that's not such a good idea Jeremiah 9 14 but they oh, I'm sorry um, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Balaam, you know, the false god Balaam, and after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. Yeah, their fathers didn't teach them to follow the Lord. Their fathers taught them to follow Balaam, you know, Satanism. Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. Now remember in the last lesson, what did they give Jesus to drink on the cross? Vinegar with gall. And he tasted, tasted it and he wouldn't drink it. I don't blame him. What does the Bible say about wormwood? Uh, would you want a water in which there's a piece of wood that's rotted and filled with worms? Uh, but Revelation 11, I'm sorry, Revelation 8 and verse 11 uh, gives you, well, maybe we should take a little bit more, maybe a verse or two before. Revelation 8, verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. The waters were made bitter because of the Wormwood, right? Back to Jeremiah 9, 15. Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood and give them water of gall to drink. Verse 16. I will scatter them also among the heathen. Ooh, the heathen. I grew up in Miami, Florida. I am well versed in the heathen. I will scatter them also among the heathen whom neither they nor their fathers have known. And I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. You know, a sword is war, right? All right, verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider ye, and call for the mourning women. You know, women that mourn for their dead. You know, not not women in the, you know, morning as in before noon. No, no. Consider ye and call for the morning women that they may come and send for cunning women that they may come 
and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with water. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land because our dwelling have cast us out. Because we have forsaken the land, because our dwelling have cast us out. Leviticus chapter 18 has some interesting things to say. Verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Uh, some people think, especially the old time church, a hundred years ago, thought the beast was... Uh, a two-legged creature, not a four-legged creature. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these things the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, Listen carefully. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. The land's going to vomit out her inhabitants. It's going to spew them out. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. Back to Jeremiah 9, verse 19. For the voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings have cast us out. The land vomited them out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters wailing, and every one her neighbor lamentation. For death is come up into our windows, and is entered into our palaces, to cut off the children from without, and the young men from the streets. Speak, thus saith the Lord. Even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field, and as the handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. So why is it uh, all the dead are going to lie in the fields? Because there's nobody there left to bury them. Because they're all dead or carried away captive. Verse 23, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. No, we're supposed to glory in the Lord. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. See, the Lord wants righteous judgment and righteousness. He wants us to straighten up and fly right and uh, live a holy, righteous life. That's what he wants. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Now remember, circumcision of the males was a sign of a covenant between the Lord and his people Israel. 
See, they were circumcised in the flesh. They were not circumcised in the heart. Big difference. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Deuteronomy 10, 16, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. Oh yeah. That's what the Lord wanted. Not just a, a flesh ritual. Jeremiah 9, 25, Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised in the flesh alone only, which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. God's going to punish his people with the, with the uncircumcised heathen. That's what he's saying right here. Verse 26. Egypt and Judah and Edom and all the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness... For all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. Boy, Jeremiah is really kind of depressing. Uh, to me, this is probably the most depressing book. But it's a book of judgment for wickedness, but... For the Lord's people, there is hope. Believe it or not, there is. In Exodus 20 and verse 6, it says, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And what did Jesus say? Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And what did they make in the wilderness? The mercy seat. You know, that's why it was called the mercy seat. Yes, the Lord has mercy upon his people. So, God's a God of judgment, but he's also a God of mercy. All right, that is the end of Jeremiah chapter 9. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.